So, what can I get you? Can I get a caramel macchiato? All jobs have rules you must follow, whether you work at the corner store or on Wall Street, and Starbucks employees are no exception. So let's find out 10 really weird rules Starbucks employees are forced to follow. Rule number three, you will not cry. Or why? Muted and subdued clothing. You have no style or sense of fashion. Well, um... When was the last time you went to a Starbucks and noticed what they were wearing? Besides the green apron, of course. Probably never, and that appears to be very much on purpose. Just read the style guide that every employee must follow. According to the guide, it says that the subdued colors an employee is allowed to wear include black, gray, navy blue, brown, and white. And that's not all. Muted and subdued are terms they don't just associate with the color of the clothing. This holds true for any patterns on the clothes as well. Solid color shirts are the preferred option, but if you don't want to go solid, then the pattern pattern better not be too busy. No big, loud logos, busy embroidery, or an inconsistent wash, whatever that means. You have to change your look. What's wrong with my look? Stripes are okay, as long as they're small. Plaid is acceptable, and tight patterns work as well. But none of those are allowed if they aren't in the acceptable color palette, of course. Thankfully, most of us probably have a number of acceptable shirts in our wardrobe. And if you don't, and you get a job at the Bucks, a quick trip to the Gap should cover all your employment attire needs. I am here. Starbucks rules head to toe. What am I going to play? If you thought that the shirts employees wear were the only things controlled by the company, well, grab another mocha latte and listen up. The style guide all employees must follow has rules for attire from head to toe, literally. When it comes to hats, workers must follow the standard rules regarding colors and patterns. But the types of hats are also monitored, so don't try coming to work wearing your favorite fedora or cool hipster bucket hat. And as for your feet, you can wear any socks you want, as long as no one can see them. Can I talk to you just for a minute? I, I dropped some socks. So save your bright pink socks with flying aardvarks on them for those days when you're wearing long pants. However, if your outfit is such that your socks might be visible to anyone, then they too must follow the standard muted and subdued guidelines. As for the shoes, mesh and canvas are a no-no, as are white shoes. And you can wear a scarf or a tie, but don't pick one with crazy colors or a busy pattern that will clash with the ever-present green apron. We've all come across Starbucks employees with big personalities, but what you might notice now is that their work clothes probably don't don't match those big, outgoing personalities. Uh, no. Totally calm. Thank you. No heavy petting. Dogs, that is. I'm a dog too! I'm a dog too! I'm a dog as well! Most people love dogs, and Starbucks employees are no exception. And while your pooch isn't allowed into the Starbucks with you, they can be tied up outside the store where employees can see them through the windows. It probably happens even more when working the drive through window with dogs sticking their heads out to say hello. And what do we all want to do when we see a cute dog? Pet them, of course. But if you're working for Starbucks, that's just something you aren't supposed to do. Chico a babá só de pizza. Mas do meu jeito, não tinha. And sure, we get it. Do we really want someone petting random dogs and then making our frappuccino, heating up our croissant, and handling our slice of banana bread? No, we don't. Although we have read employee confessions about how they put on gloves in order to pet a dog, or raced to the washroom right after to give their hands a good scrub. And in those cases, we are totally okay with them breaking the rules. And speaking of your dog, if you don't mind your rover on a sugar high, ask one of the green-aproned employees for a puppuccino. Yes, it's a real thing. And yes, it sounds awesome. It's just a cup full of whipped cream. But our question is, can we order one even if we don't have a dog? Come here, girl. Let me see your squishy face. <laughs> Stay as long as you want. Hey, Sam, I call. It's time for you to go. Do you love Starbucks but hate coffee? 
Do you dream of sitting down in one of those big comfy chairs but aren't hungry and don't want anything to drink? Well, guess what? Head on over to your favorite Starbucks joint, grab a seat, and enjoy. And notice we didn't say buy something before you sit down, or at all, for that matter. That's because you don't have to. That's right, Starbucks employees are not allowed to ask you to leave the store, even if you aren't making a single purchase. This rule came into being when a Philadelphia Starbucks employee asked a couple of men to leave who had been waiting in the cafe and not purchasing anything. The two men were African American and video footage shows that they were sitting calmly and not disturbing anyone, but when police arrived, they were arrested. This obviously wasn't good for anyone involved. Starbucks put many of its employees through racial bias training following the incident and went on to change their policies soon after as well. Now, a Starbucks employee can only report someone who isn't leaving the store if they feel that there is a threat to people's safety. And even then, they must only call the police and are not allowed to go and ask the person to leave themselves. Beanie? <laughs> None of those people are real. I'm stealing all your sugar packets and napkins. You can use the bathroom. Your Honor, would the court be willing to grant me a short bathroom break? Can it wait? When you're out and about and have to go to the bathroom, there's always that moment of panic as you try to find a restaurant or business that will let you use the facilities. Many places will just say no, while others will force you to make a purchase in order to gain access to the precious washroom. Well, not Starbucks. Just like you can hang out at the Bucks for as long as you want without making a purchase, you can also walk right in and use the bathroom. You might have to ask for a key or a code, but employees have to give it to you, and you don't have to make a purchase to get it. Ooh. Okay, pee break. Ooh, I too has to break pee. Finding a Starbucks location near you is generally pretty easy, and for the most part, Starbucks bathrooms are pretty clean as well. So having that option when you really need to go can be a lifesaver, or at least a pants saver. It happened. What are you doing? It happened. They can't say no. No, God, please, no, no! No! Okay, so that is a bit of an exaggeration. A Starbucks employee is allowed to say no, but they are encouraged not to. In fact, no matter what the customer requests, the policy is to just say yes. Obviously, if you're a rude jerk asking for something completely ridiculous, then you could hear no. But former Starbucks employees have said that they are supposed to focus on the yes whenever a customer asks a question or makes a request. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. Let's say your coffee got cold and you want them to heat it up in the microwave. While they may not be able to do that, the proper response would be something to the effect of, yes, we can warm it up for you with some steamed milk. Now, as with everything, there are exceptions and not just for rude requests. If you ask an employee to let you in before opening hours or let you stay just a little longer at closing time, then the answer can and will be no. The employees have a whole checklist of things to get done, and letting you in early so that you can get your favorite comfy chair is not on that checklist. So just wait patiently in the mornings and be respectful and leave in the evening. As for all those other requests, you'll probably get a yes. No! Split tips. He only tipped like 4%. Yeah. Mm, that's daddy. Tipping has become second nature to many of us, and in most cases, we like to tip the person that serves us, the person that helped us out. However, if you're at Starbucks and you have a particularly awesome barista, you should know that your tip won't just be going to them. The Starbucks tipping policy states that all employees must split their tips with everyone else. We're gonna give you all the money in the world! Oh, and yes, that's a nice way to keep things equal, but it also means that your tip for employee A will be split between employee B, employee C, and everyone else working that shift. There are reports of some customers trying to get around this policy by giving their favorite baristas an envelope with cash inside and their name on it. However, we don't know if that works or if employees are still made to split that cash with everyone else. Also, there have been employees who have posted online that in that situation, they would feel bad not splitting it with everyone and sneaking around the policy. And we can totally respect that. All right, I'll take care of the check. You guys can get the tip. No temporary hair stuff. Here we go! 
Do you have pink hair and want to work at Starbucks? Maybe you have half green, half white hair in honor of your favorite coffee joint and really want to be a barista. Well, have no fear because the color of your hair is not a problem. There is no rule against having colorful hair. My hair's blue! But it has to be permanent, or at least semi-permanent. If you plan on dyeing your hair with that temporary stuff that washes out with one shower, then don't plan on working at Starbucks. And this is another rule we can totally get behind, as the semi-permanent stuff takes 4 to 12 shampoos before fading, while the temporary hair dye is much more likely to end up in many places besides the person's head. Which also holds true for other temporary hair changes, such as glitter or chalk. Anyone who's been out at a club and comes in contact with someone with glitter in their hair knows that there is a very good chance you are going to be finding glitter on your person after just a few minutes with them. And while, yes, a night out on the town and a little glitter can be a lot of fun, finding it in your morning coffee on the way to work? Not so much. They are working slower because they have to. Was he slow? No. It might seem weird for a company to institute rules that force employees to work slower and be less efficient, but that is exactly what Starbucks did back in 2010. <laughs> Just over a decade ago, the company made some changes to the workflow that their baristas had to follow, which included such things as employees not being allowed to make more than two drinks at a time. Uh-oh. Looks like you should have ordered from Hurry Up Shrimp. And they could only start on the second drink when the first one was almost done. Also, employees can't steam a big batch of milk all at once, but instead must do it for each drink individually. There are also certain tools they use that must be washed after each use, and they can only use one espresso machine at a time. There's also no moving from station to station, as workers must remain at their workstation. The funny thing is that the head office introduced these rules in an effort to make things run smoother and faster, but instead it really slowed things down and led to longer lines and longer wait times times for customers. As far as we know, they haven't reversed course on these rules, so if you're wondering if your barista could be working faster, the answer is probably yes, but the boss won't let them. They're probably working as fast as they are allowed to. Chicken with fries. Chicken with fries, please, mate. Chicken with fries? Chicken with, Chicken fries. with fries. Chicken with fries. No jewelry or perfume. I heard Ariana has a new perfume. Starbucks employees are going to work and not on a date, so they're asked to leave big pieces of jewelry at home and forget the perfume or cologne. While this might seem harsh, it's actually pretty reasonable if you think about it. The rule against jewelry states that employees must not wear anything that could chip or slip into food or drinks. That makes sense, right? <laughs> No one wants an extra shot of bracelet in their latte. As for the perfume and cologne thing, this also makes sense when you think about it. The last thing you want when enjoying your coffee is the scent of flowers or some employee who still believes that if you wear enough Axe body spray, it will actually attract the ladies. You want to smell those roasted coffee beans. Smell is a big part of any culinary experience, and maybe even more so when it comes to quality coffee, so we are all for this rule. And we like to think that all employees shower regularly, so there's no need for the extra spray-on scents. There's also a rule against wearing nail polish, which we thought was a little silly at first, but it does fall into the nothing-that-can-chip category, so again, it makes sense. We like our flat white without any red chips of nail polish, please. Scanyan Weinstock and Reisman. Get a taste of more great videos. Just tap or click. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.